Well, hey, everybody, uh, thanks for uh, tuning in today. Um, before we, we jump into um, our preaching, I just wanted to say thank you uh, so much uh, for your generosity. Um, you, you continue to just uh, amaze me at the way that you are uh, being faithful to God, faithful to his church uh, during these uh, days. Uh, I want to remind you, you can always give by uh, heading over here to Corinth.cc and uh, clicking the give button up there at the top, um, or you can uh, mail your offering in uh, here to the church. Uh, now, with the stay-at-home order in place, um, our offices aren't manned very often at all. Uh, mail is being checked, um, so probably those two options are your best options uh, to be able to give uh, right now in this moment. But thank you. Um, your giving is making a difference, and uh, we're able to do a few things um, to help people out to try and be a source of encouragement during this team, uh, this time. Um, like uh, coming up here this week, uh, we're going to be able to take breakfast to the uh, to the post office just to be able to say thank you to all the uh, postal workers um, who are working so hard. But um, that is possible because of your generosity and your giving. So thank you. Thank you very much uh, for uh, for being generous. So I, I'm going to pray for us, and uh, then we're, we're just going to launch right in today. So Father God, uh, we are um, entrusting you during this time that you're going to continue to take care of us, and that you're going to continue to watch over us, and uh, we are putting our faith in you. So now as we um, just turn our attention to your scriptures, please give us ears to hear what you would have us to hear. Please help me to say uh, today in this moment what needs to be said, and uh, God, we pray that all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you all for, for tuning in. Um, if you are uh, watching on Facebook, uh, welcome. Uh, we'd love to invite you to click that uh, like button or that share button. Let your friends know uh, that you're watching right now, or you can even start um, a watch party uh, right where you are as well. My name is Adam, and uh, I'm the senior minister here at Corinth, and it really is a, a, a pleasure to have you with us today. Um, if you are new, maybe this is the first time you, you've ever checked in um, or watched us online, maybe a friend just kind of, this just kind of popped up uh, in your feed there. I'd love to invite you over to Corinth.cc and to click that I'm new card. And uh, if you would do that and then uh, just fill out that real quick uh, short form, uh, we'd love a way to be able to connect with you to find out how we can be praying for you and how we can help you uh, during this time. So, uh, you know, these are some just crazy days, aren't they? You know, my, my prayer for, for you, for your house, is that you are uh, staying safe, you're, you're being healthy, you're, you're being wise, and uh, that you're making good choices, and that you're also finding ways that we're not just going to go through this season, but that we're actually going to be able to grow through this season as well. And uh, I, I know that these are uh, uncertain days. And it feels like that the, the longer it goes, the more uncertain it becomes. And it also feels like the, the longer that this stretches out, the, the more likely it is that um, we're going to be um, experiencing some, some impact from this. Whether it's an impact from the virus and somebody you know um, actually coming down with it or maybe even uh, losing their life or, or you know, maybe losing jobs, losing incomes, um, the, the impact um, is, is growing in, in these days. Um, I, I know that it's easy in this to find us uh, captive by, by worry and, and despair and to start wondering, you know, well, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen next week? You know, how long is this all, all going to last? I know that in our house, um, we, we've been asking those, those questions. Um, you know, uh, our son, AJ, our oldest son, uh, he's, he's graduating this year. He's one of those 2020 seniors. And, you know, we've had big plans having all the family come out to celebrate graduation. And now it's like, well, is that going to happen? W when's it going to happen? What's it, what's it all going to look like? Uh, my brother and, and his wife um, are, are, are pregnant right now. And uh, they're going to be having their fourth child, but their first son um, here in just a few weeks. And it's like, well, when are we going to be freed up to be able to go and visit? And it's really easy to just kind of get caught up and allow ourselves to just get caught in that little cycle of just worry and worry and worry. What's coming? What's coming? What's coming? And I, I just want to give you permission, okay? I, I want to tell you it's okay to, to, to try and plan, to try and prepare for what's going to come down the road. But can I remind you of what Mother Teresa said? She said this, write your plans in pencil, but then give God the eraser. And so in the midst of all of this, that's what I would encourage you to do is, is go ahead and make some plans and try to prepare and be as ready as you can, but then also be, be flexible, be adaptable, and know that things can change. 
There, there, there's a prayer that um, I recently came across and I started praying in, in this time. And it just goes like this. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has yet to arrive. All I have is today. So God, with today, help me to live today fully alive in Christ. So I just know I'm, I'm praying for you. And uh, in this moment, I'm praying that um, we will all do that, that we'll go day by day, take each moment by moment, and we'll let tomorrow worry about itself. So today, as we, we move into our, our, our message, just uh, we're, we're going to wrap up our series that we've been calling Storyline. And in Storyline, we've been looking at uh, parables of Jesus, stories that Jesus told. Uh, Jesus was an incredible storyteller, and, and he loved to make his point about what was going on and in, about the kingdom of God, about who he was, by, and what he was expecting uh, from his followers uh, by, by telling stories. You know, it's a story like, a, you know, there's a guy traveling down the road, and he ends up mugged and everything taken away from him. And a couple guys pass by, they leave him there. But then one time, this good Samaritan passes by, helps and, and helps him and takes care of him. Tells another story about a woman that lost a coin or a shepherd that lost a sheep. Or there was a dad that had a son, came to him and said, hey, I wish you were dead. Give me everything that, that you own. He loved to tell a good story. And he teaches, he challenges using these stories, just kind of help us to see who it is that God wants us to be and what God wants us for, for our lives, story after story. Well, so we've looked at several stories. We're going to look at one more story today. It's actually the, the next to last story that Jesus ever told while he was walking on the face of this earth. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew, and it's in Matthew chapter 25 is where it's going to be. So if you're at home uh, watching, uh, I invite you to just go ahead and grab a Bible. Hopefully you have one there, or um, maybe grab your phone and go to Bible.com, or um, open up a new tab in your web browser and head on over to Bible Gateway. But let's look at Matthew chapter 25. Now, it's the last week of Jesus' life. The cross is, is looming over him in this moment. In fact, it's just a few days from now that he is going to be betrayed by one of his best friends. He's going to be handed over. He's going to be arrested. He's going to be tried, and then they are going to, they're going to crucify him. So it's just a few days away, and so Jesus knows this. He knows that his time with the, his guys is short. And so he just tells story after story after story after story. And this story here, it's, like I said, it's the next to last one that he's going to tell right here in his last week. This is, this is what he says, starting off in verse 14. He says, again, it's going to be like a man going on a, a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another he gave two, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. Now, let's pause for just a second. Now, maybe you've heard this, this story uh, before, and if you've been in church, you know, for a while in your life, you know, you've heard this story, and you've probably heard it called the, the parable of talents. And um, here, instead of calling it a talent, they're calling it a bag of gold. So just think, bag of gold is, is a talent, okay? And it's a, it's, a, it's a big sum of money. That's really what the point is. In fact, a, a talent um, was about 15 years of a day laborer's wages. So if you look at that, one talent is roughly about $300,000 is what it is. So it's a large sum of money. So to one guy, he gives $1.5 million. To another guy, he gives $600,000. And to another guy, he gives $300,000. Okay, so he just kind of spreads it out. But the key phrase here is found there in verse 15. And it's that phrase, each according to his ability. In other words, that the master's not trying to be fair. He's looking at their capacity and he's asking how much can each one of these guys handle? And he looks at one and says, well, you can handle about 1.5 million worth. You can handle about 600,000 worth. And you, well, you can handle about $300,000 worth. So it's about capacity. Okay, it's not about fairness. It's about the capacity. It's about their ability. The story continues. Jesus says, the man who received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more, doubled his money. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. So you can see the story that Jesus is telling. He's like, you got, you got this first guy, he got five, and the other guy that got two, they went out and, and they invested in something valuable. 
Now, normally we would say they like invested in the stock market or a good mutual fund or an index fund, but not now, not in this, not in these days and age. They went out and invested in something valuable like toilet paper and hand sanitizer and Lysol wipes, right? Those things are like gold right now. So they went out and invested in those and they, they took a risk. Don't miss that. They, they, they really did. They, they risked it because they could have lost the money. They invested it. They, they tried to, to find something valuable, but there's a chance that it could have not panned out. There's a chance that the market could have tanked. There's a chance that the value went down, but they tried something with what they had received, and they, re- they found success. But the other guy Jesus tells us, he's like, well, no, that's not what I'm going to do. He, he gets a big Folgers can, and he crams that 15 years of salary down into that Folgers can, and then he goes out into his backyard, and he, he digs a hole, buries it, and then he draws a map and drops a GPS tag right there so he'd never forget where it was. Now, I want to point out something about this last guy, all right? Where the first two took a risk, this guy avoids risk. But because he avoided risk, he also avoided any potential success. That's a problem here. See what Jesus says here? He says, after a long time, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold and see, I've gained five more. And his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things, but I'll put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags also came. He said, master, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. And see, I have gained two more. And his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. So, so far, so good, right? Well, the story continues. Then, the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you, you haven't sown and gathering where you haven't scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to I want to just stop and pause here on on this guy for just a second because I want to show you immediately where this guy goes is blame and excuses. He just starts blaming the owner. He he blames the master. He's, He's making excuses for why he hasn't performed with what he received. I love the quote from Benjamin Franklin. He said this, he that is good at making excuses is seldom good at anything else. And that's this guy. I mean, immediately he's like, oh, you know, I knew that you're, you're a hard man. I know that you're a guy that you know, is kind of aggressive. You, you, know, you, 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 you harvest, you gather. I, I, I was scared. And really, really, if you think about it, boss, here, here's the deal. This is your fault. You know, because if you weren't the way that you are, then, well, well, well then I wouldn't have been so afraid. And then maybe I would have taken a, a, a risk. See, th- this is important. Th- this guy's view of his master determined his behavior. That the way that he viewed the master is what actually ended up determining his, his behavior. And because he was afraid of his master, his fear held him captive and kept him from success. See, the, the problem with this guy is he chose safety over service. He, he chose safety over service. I mean, the other two, they took risks. They, they, they did not play it safe. They took the risks, and they, because of that, they found a reward um, because they chose what had been given to them to seek out a prophet. But this guy, he's scared. He's afraid. And so he chooses to maintain safety instead of serving his master. And so he fails, and he learns a difficult lesson, and this is it. What we don't use for God, we're in danger of losing. And so he didn't take a risk. And he found out that the greatest risk is not risking anything. Jesus tells it this way. He he continues the story. He says, the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. 
So you knew that I harvest where I haven't sown and I gather where I haven't scattered seed. Well, then you should have at least put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The end. Story over. And Jesus just stops the story right there. Kind of a, kind of a terrifying way to end the story, isn't it? But I, I don't want to get lost in this. And so as we, we consider this, this story that Jesus is telling, I, I don't want you to miss the point, okay? So, so this is Jesus' point. Everybody gets an uneven amount of opportunity. And everybody gets held accountable for what they do with it. Everybody gets an uneven amount of opportunity. Everybody gets that. Everybody gets it. But, I mean, it's a different amount, different levels. But everybody is also re- held accountable. You're responsible for what you do with what you receive. See, everybody has their privilege. Everybody has an opportunity. And everybody will give an account for what you do with that opportunity. And then it's opportunity. It doesn't even belong to us. You guys notice that, right? All this stuff, the the talents, the bags of gold, whatever you want to call them, they belong to the master. So it's on loan to us. It's our responsibility to figure out how to leverage it. You see, we are all responsible for what we have been given. We're all responsible for what we have been given. We don't receive equally, but we're all equally responsible. See, one of the things I think Jesus is trying to help us to see here is that whenever it comes to to life, God's not trying to be fair. He's not trying to be even. He is just doling out and he's giving us what he's given us to work with. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, you you look at how this is all just kind of spread out. I mean, we're really all, we're either five, you know, two or one kind of bag kind of people, right? Right? I mean, we all know five bag people, five talent people. You've you've had interactions with five talent people. You know, uh, maybe it was in sports. If you were you grew up playing sports, you you had that guy on the team or that gal on the team that just everything came easily to them. They they were a five talent kind of person. Or or maybe it's somebody that you you work with and you just watch them. Everything they touch, it just works well. Everything they do, it succeeds. You know, they 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 find success in. They're just five talent kind of people. You know, they just kind of got this natural, just kind of. Midas touch to them. And five talent people, here's the thing. If not careful, if that's you, uh, the the one thing that can happen is you can take it for granted, can't you? You you really can. And so that's kind of the challenge of the five talent person is to to not take it for granted. But we also know, you know, like one bag people, you know, one talent kind of people. Where everything is just kind of hard for them. It's difficult. They, they struggle. It's not an easy thing. And, and they, it's easy for a one talent, one bad kind of person to kind of just look around and compare themselves to other people and say, well, I don't have a lot going for me if, if I'm comparing myself to them. That's an easy thing to do. But, but really, most of us, we probably find ourselves to be two bad people, right? And as I we're at that, like at that five level, or maybe we're not at that one level, but for the question for all of us, it's just this. What am I going to do with what I've been given? What am I going to do with it? You know, what are we going to do with what we have? I mean, because the tendency that we have is to look around at everybody else and to say, well, that's, that's not fair. They got five. Or that's not fair. They only got one. But that's not the point. The point is, is that we've all received. We've all received. And we all have a responsibility to do something with what we've received. And so the parable is teaching us. We look at our bag. We don't look at the bags of other people. We don't look and see what all they got. We look and we see, here's what I have been given. Here's what I have received. And we are to refuse to take that for granted, to make excuses or to blame others for why we're not able to do something with what we've, ha- re- we've received. So, so here's my question for you today. So what are you going to do with what you've been given? Five bag, two bag, one bag, doesn't matter. What are you going to do? 
with what you've been given. You know, maybe today you find yourself and you're like, you're 25 years old and you've got an okay job, but you know, maybe things aren't the way you thought that they would be at 25. Don't, don't look at that. What are you going to do with what you have right now? Maybe you're 32 years old and you've got a great job, but you thought at this point you'd be married and you'd have kids, okay? And so life hasn't gone the way you, you, you wanted it to go. No, 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 no. What are you going to do with what God has given you right now in this moment? Maybe you're, you're happily married. You've got a great marriage and that's great and everything, but you would hope that at this point you would have kids, multiple kids. No, no, no. What are you going to do with what you have received right now, with what you have right now? In this moment, what are you going to do with what's been given to you? You know, as I was thinking about it that this week, you know, in, in this moment, uh, we're all sheltered in place, you know. Uh, we're not supposed to go out. We're not supposed to go out unless we're going to the doctor's office or to go get groceries or, you know, if, if we've got something else that takes care of it. But we're supposed to stay home right now. We're sheltering in place. I mean, school has been canceled through the end of the year. Events have been canceled. Sports have been canceled. Um, a lot of our jobs were working from home. Some of, some of you have been laid off. And so as we look at it in this moment, it would be really easy to look and say what we don't have. But in this moment, what do you have? Let's look at that. What, what is it that you have? And you want me to tell you what, what it is that you've been given right now? The answer is very simple. You've been given time. You've been gifted time right now. You have no places to be. You have no commutes that you need to take. There are no movies that you can go see. There are no practices that you need to rush to. Okay, You have been given time in this moment. That's what God is entrusting you and me with right now is time. More time than we've ever felt like we've had before. So here's my question. How are you making the most of your time right now in this moment? I, I got a confession to make. This is easy because there's nobody in the room. I, I just have to make a confession to a camera. But so the, the other night, um, it, it was you know probably about nine o'clock or so, and it was before bed, and um, I, I found myself just on my phone, and I was just scrolling through TikTok and Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. It was about nine o'clock whenever I started. Then all of a sudden, I looked up and it was nine forty-five. And I'd spent 45 minutes just wasting away, scrolling through just stupidity, you know, um, just watching people do the same dance, you know, and different, you know, different people doing it, just all these different things just going on. And I just thought, oh my goodness, what a waste of time. That was just stupid right there, right? You know, it's like, I, I could have used that time in a much better way. I mean, there, there are books that I, that I want to read. You know, there, there are habits that I want to develop and enhance. There are disciplines that I want to become a better in. God has given me the time to do that. And here I am just scrolling through, scrolling through TikTok. It's like, man, I, I need to do better than that. God has entrusted me with time. So here, here's what I would say to you. In this moment, you have no excuse to not be reading your Bible right now. I mean, really, you, you have time. There's nowhere that you need to go. So pick up your Bible, five minutes, 10 minutes a day. Read your Bible. There is no excuse right now for not trying to develop a new habit or, or maybe to kick a bad one that you have. There's no excuse. There's no excuse for us not to be exploring new spiritual disciplines to try and, and, and deepen our relationship with God. There, there's no excuse right now. God has given us time. Moms and dads, talk to you for just a second. You've been entrusted with your kids being at home now. I, I love what somebody said. It's like, now that we're all homeschooling, that means prayer is back in school, right? Because now it's time for, for us to be able to take advantage of this. We have, we have a moment right now where God has entrusted us with time. Let us make the most of the time that we have been given. God's also entrusted us with impact. I mean, stop and you think about this, that the impact that we have, we're all on social media. That's how we're trying to stay connected uh, right now. In fact, you're watching this online, uh, on your phone, on your computer, um, you know, on, on your TV maybe. And we have a, a chance to, to share this, to invite people to join us. And it's a chance to have an impact. I was talking to somebody just this past week and uh, we were talking about them watching it on Facebook and, and, and they said that they accidentally clicked that watch party button on, on 
the video just thinking, oh, well, here, if I click this, this means some of my family and my friends, you know, maybe we can watch this together. And, but what they told me was hilarious. Is like all of a sudden, all these people that they have, you know, business contacts with, people from, you know, all across the state of Georgia and even across the nation started watching our services with them. How incredible is that, right? I mean, just with one little click of a button, you have a chance to invite people from all over the nation and some of you even all over the world to sit down and to just enjoy and to be a part of a church service together. That's impact, my friends. And God is asking, he's like, hey, I'm giving this to you right now. Can you not leverage the tools that have been placed in your life? Leverage the technology that is right here to just make a bigger impact for the kingdom of God. You've been entrusted with a chance to impact. What are you going to do with what he has given to you? God has given us what he's given us, and he's given it to us for us to do something with it. And it would be so easy right now to just sit around and to gripe, to complain, to to whine, and to make excuses. There's a lot of ways that we could do that right now. It'd be easy. And frankly, nobody would really blame you if if that's the path you wanted to take. But there is a better way. And that is to take what God has been given to us and we can accept what is right here in front of us and say, this has come from our heavenly father who loves us, who cares for us, who works all things together for our good. And we can say, I'm going to take what he has given us right now in this moment and I'm going to leverage it and I'm going to invest it for his sake and for his glory. Take what he has given you. And do something with it. Because you see, the key verse in all of this entire story is found there in verse 19. Whenever Jesus says this, after a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. Listen, friends, one day, someday, there's going to come a time whenever you and I, we are going to have to give an account for our lives. And what Jesus is trying to help us to see is that day could be an awesome day. An incredible day of celebration whenever we get to say, God, look what we were able to do with what you entrusted us with. Look at how we risked. Look at how we invested. Look at how we we sought out ways to use what you had given us. And it would be an awesome day to hear our Heavenly Father, to hear our Master look at us and to say, well done, good and faithful servant. There's coming a day whenever we're going to give an account and it could be an incredible day or it could just be another chance for you to make excuses and to blame other people. So what are you going to do with what's been given to you? Because the bottom line today is very simple. To whom something is given, something is given required. To whom something is given, something is required. And I pray today that you're going to say, God, I'm not going to take this for granted. I'm not going to choose safety over service. I am going to take what you have given me this day. And I'm going to do something for you. And I am going to do something with what I've received, so that one day I can hear those great words, well done, good and faithful servant. Let me pray for you. God, I I pray today that you would be doing a work in our hearts and helping us to see all that you have provided us with. And that you would help us to see that to whom something is given, something is required. And that we, would, that we would take an account, whether we're five bag people, two bag people, one bag people, it doesn't matter, but we would take an account of what it is that you have given us. And that we would take into account where we are right now in this moment. And that we would do something with it. That we would invest it for your glory and for your kingdom's sake. Thank you for giving us Jesus. 
Every single one of us has had the opportunity to receive Jesus. And we pray, God, that through grace and through faith that we would that we would accept that gift and that we would live lives changed because of your great gift. And we pray that all in the name of Jesus. Amen.